Hey, hey, you wear a ski jacket for running, man. It's cold, man. <laughs> you ready, bro? I'm always ready. So I put it on this app. I put it on this uh, app again, bro. This morning in the forest. Hey, that's all what you do, man. Stretching, man. Yes. We're up in the forest. Gonna do like eight kilometers, I think, today. Just a chilling pace. We have training later, both of us. So cool, man. Just finished a good run this morning. Yeah, How you man. feel, bro? Good, man. Good. Man. Yeah, fit, fresh. Fit, Ready for tonight, bro? Yeah, Training always, tonight? Always. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. You did like eight kilometers up. Yeah, eight man. kilometers, I think, today. In the forest, it was our Monday, Monday ritual, huh? <laughs> so we're gonna keep going with this. It's good. We go eat now, bro. Yeah, man. And then get ready for training tonight. Yeah, so as you saw there, we went for like the normal loop around, it's around eight and a half kilometers from here. And it's just in the, the Wolfsburg forest, so it's quite a nice run. Yeah, nothing too crazy, you know, we we're just speaking about, you know, about football and just getting in touch again as we do every week. It's kind of like our, our weekly kind of ritual at the moment. So it's good, you know, to go with a player like him, speak with him also. He's got a contract in a third tier team here in Holland, and he's a good player, which... Uh, He's also having um, difficulties at the moment, you know, in the club. He's not playing as much as he would like to. And, like, to be honest, he should be. Like, he's a really good player. So that's what we did. We just went on the normal loop. The start's kind of flat. We go up, down, and then back around. So it's just quite a good casual run for the morning. I did that uh, fasted as well. So I'm going to go get something to eat and go for a shower, take some coffee. Then me and Isis are going to go head into the city in a bit. So... training later tonight with Achilles and Arno so I'm gonna go do that and um, yeah I'll try to get some videos up and then uh, speak later so just something a little bit about me just my story about how I came to Europe I started playing and I was training in a football Academy with my uncle Declan Edge he started up a football Academy yeah pretty much because my cousin and myself we wanted to become professional football players so he got a group of us together in Hamilton and we were training twice a day, six days a week. We'd have one day off a week and we'd play. I remember I was living in uh, Tauranga and me and Ryan Thomas and Tyler Boyd would travel every day after school first before we moved over there. Uh, one and a half hours to get to training after school and then back one and a half hours after training so it'd be late nights would try ask to get off school early. Then we eventually moved over to Hamilton and then yeah, started training twice a day and getting really professional and full time into things. I remember we were always very lucky. We always had the best equipment, the best balls provided, the best yeah, football boots and the latest football boots. You know, that was all, we were all, all very lucky in that sense that we all came from quite middle class families. After that, we played in the New Zealand National League, which is the first tier there, the ASB Premier League. We, we joined Waikato, Waikato FC, Waikato Football Club, and we ended up playing in the first league in New Zealand at 14, 15 years of age, which was crazy. You know, we had um, a style of play that we stuck to, and I remember I started my first game in the ASB Premiership against Manel Esposito. He, he was a player from Spain. He played for Barcelona. He made his debut 
the same day as Lionel Messi made his debut. And my debut that I played in the first league in New Zealand, I was marking him. And talk about just experience and having to grow up quickly and kind of becoming a man in the game. 15 years of age playing against full-time proper professionals. We played against Auckland City. They played in the Club World Cup. So it was it was quite a step up. I remember yeah, defending a lot, just trying to work hard. And I had a good mentality. You know, I always wanted to be the best I could be and to make steps from there. So we played all season there. And then the next year, we ended up all moving down to Olay, which is a football academy based in Porerua, just outside of Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand. So we went there and we were, we were training. We played for Western Suburbs in the in the Winter League, the Central League. So I did a season there and I had some opportunities to go to the Wellington Phoenix, potentially in New Zealand at that time, which, yeah, didn't really work out. There were some things that were happening at the time. There was things with the national team and, you know, with with my uncle in the football academy. So that didn't work out in the end. In that time, you know, there was a good group of us together. There was still Harry Edge, Ryan Thomas, Tyler Boyd decided to go to the Phoenix at that time. And then, you know, there was players under that with Muhammad Awad, Josh Green, uh, many others, you know, I'm sorry I didn't name you, but, you know, many other shout outs to all the boys that were training with us. It was a very high quality group and much respect to Declan and the Olay Academy with the quality that he kept in training. It was really a full time professional environment. We were living and breathing football as as we do over here in Europe uh, still in, at this time. Everything's just about improving your game and diet and yeah, it's like 24-7, you know, it's being 24-7 in, in football and trying to get better. From there, we ended up doing our time there a little bit. We were ready to move on to the next kind of stage. So, you know, Declan set me up with a, a trial at Birmingham City. Uh, he set Ryan Thomas up at Pax Waller and then he sent my cousin Harry out to the Central Coast Mariners which is an A-League team in uh, Australia. So we went all out on our own kind of paths and Tyler Boyd was in with the Phoenix at the time so he had already started his kind of professional journey. I went to Birmingham City and it didn't quite work out. I was there all training, they had some financial problems and I was promised a few things that didn't work out so I got in touch with a scout while I was at Birmingham, I was staying at my auntie's house because she lives in London, and then I ended up getting a sc in with a scout in uh, Italy, and he put me in touch with Vicenza Calcio, which I hadn't heard of the team at the time. They were playing in the third tier in, in Italy. It was one of the stronger teams, and I did a little bit of reading about the club, and they had produced Roberto Baggio, which is one of the biggest Italian players of all time, and and Luca Toni was also playing there in his time. So I decided just to give it a go, like why not go there on trial, see what happens. And the worst case scenario is I don't like it, I can come back again. What ended up happen happening was I went there the first day of training. I did really well and they offered me a, a contract straight after the training. So I spoke to my uncle and my manager at the time, the scout, and we decided to let's go, let's take it. What happens if nothing else comes up, it could be a good opportunity. So I was there in the second team uh, with no salary, living in like an apartment in Italy, like a block of just rooms with a shared bathroom, all players in this like kind of dormitory apartment kind of situation. So it was crazy. Um, you didn't have your own private space. You, I was in a room with like two other guys. And that was the life there pretty much for a good good eight months grinding away playing with the second team having some qu quite good games and having a bit of success you know, I obviously impressed that season and I ended up coming into the first team at the end of the season for a friendly game against the first team of Juventus so that was just a crazy unbelievable experience we went up to their head headquarters in uh, Turin. We went to the training ground and, you know, the car park was just full with, like, Ferraris and, and they're sponsored by Fiat at the time. So there was Fiats and Ferraris just all around the car park and it was unbelievable. I ended up playing the whole second half and yeah, we were playing against the best players in the world. There was Buffon, there was Pogba, there was Lorente, there was Tevez. It was unbelievable. Chiellini, you know, all World Cup players. And it was just an absolutely unbelievable experience coming into that. 
So I went away that end of the season pretty confident. I think I came back to New Zealand to do some national team duties with the under under 20s, I believe. We were traveling, traveling around a lot at that time. Then I ended up picking up a first team contract that second year in Italy and we moved up to the Serie B. So I was with the first team all year, training and playing with some amazing players. Yeah, to name a few, Andrea Petania, he's now playing for Spal in the Serie A. He's you know, he's a very big player in Italy now, and also Leonardo Spinazzola. He's playing for Juventus, and he's also in the Italian national team. So this is the type of quality that I was playing with. Yeah, one more, uh, Di Gennaro, Davide Di Gennaro. He played for AC Milan. Uh, he was also playing for Lazio quite recently. This was the quality, you know, that I was competing with and training with every day. So it was just an amazing experience. We ended up finishing third in the Serie B. Just one but one point behind automatic promotion to the Serie A, and that was just just amazing. But a little bit unlucky, but also just a crazy experience uh, training under Pasquale Marino, who's also quite a famous trainer in Italy, and just sucking in as much knowledge and sucking in as much experience as I could out of the environment. Because the first coach who I got there also, his name was uh, Giovanni Lopez. He played many times for Lazio in the Serie A in his playing career. So I just wanted to learn as much and as much as much as I could. Which I did, you know, I improved a lot. I got super fit. The most fit I've ever been in my life in Italy was was crazy. Running, gym, fitness, the preseason was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So that was an amazing experience, played with some really great players and and yeah, unfortunately that came to an end. They decided at the end of the season not to renew my contract. They ended up going for some different players. I wasn't 100% clear of the situation as I was speaking with different agents and promised things that they would sign me and that I'll go on loan for a half season or something and it just didn't, yeah, it just turned, turned sour and negative. So the the contract was up, so I had to go and search for a team again from nothing. So I was promised many things from a few agents and that didn't come up. I was at Sheffield Wednesday. I went on trial there injured. The agent just said, go and just see what you can do because it was a good experience. So I went there and I played with the under 23s against Cardiff under 23s and I could hardly run. I was just limping around the field pretty much. Obviously my technique quality showed, but nothing compared to what I can do because my whole game's based on running and motivation and fighting for the team so that just didn't work out. I then went to Accrington Stanley as a center back in these leagues it was league two in England at the time which pretty much you're playing in league two as a center back they're looking for players like at least six foot five, 190 centimeters which I know I'm not. I'm a technical player I like playing out from the back I like having the ball, I'm a defensive midfielder in these kind of regions and that just didn't work out as well. So after a long time struggling in, in England and trying to find opportunities, trying to build connections, nothing kind of came up. So I got back in touch with Declan, my uncle, and he put me in touch with Ramon Tribule and he's the head trainer at Auckland City who play in the ASB Premier League in New Zealand. It was uh, one of the yeah, top two or three biggest teams in New Zealand over the last 10 years. They've probably been up there the, the highest. They've gone to the Club World Cup most most of the years and they've won Oceania Champions League, which that's the qualifier to get there. And also in the league a lot, they're always up there. So that was, um, that was an opportunity that I was interested in because of the Club World Cup. They were going there that season. It gave me a good chance to kind of potentially play and because I hadn't done that in the Serie B, so I needed to play games and get some games on my profile. And it was a good window for me to kind of go there and try and get some games and kind of, you know, get some match rhythm and do do that. So I went there, struggled to get in right at the start, came in towards the end of the half-season break. Yeah, I, I didn't play in the Club World Cup in the end. I was super close because our captain... <clears throat> and starting centre defender, he had a little injury before the game, and the coach told me, I need you to warm up like you're going to play today, because we're going to do some fitness tests on this guy before the game, if he's not in, you're playing, so I did all the warm up, did all the warm up, like with the team, the coach said, yeah, he's gone through the fitness test, he doesn't feel 100%, but we're going to start him, 
If he breaks down in five minutes, you're coming in. So he ends up, of course, playing the whole game, and I'm, like, warming up for 90 minutes <laughs> on the sideline, trying to wait to get my chance in this quite big experience, which didn't come around. So, yeah, that is what it is. We came back to New Zealand, played the full half, half year with Auckland City. Uh, we ended up reaching the grand final of New Zealand and just missing out an extra time for that trophy. And then we won the uh, Oceania Champions League that year, which was quite an amazing experience to win a trophy and also good for my profile online. So that was quite cool. After Auckland City, I went back to Western Suburbs with Declan for a little bit in the Olay Academy. Looking for options, looking for options. I was working hard trying to build connections, speak to agents, and actually I got a opportunity to trial in Latvia in a place called Yelgava. They were a Europa League team, and I just really wanted to get out of New Zealand at that time, so I went pretty much, paid for my own ticket, went to the other side of the world for this trial in Latvia. So I got there. And, you know, it was summer, so the weather was alright, and it was just a crazy trial in the end. I was training a few times, and, yeah, pretty much nothing. Couldn't show myself so much. Technically, I thought I was better than a lot of the players. I thought I had done a good job, and then the trainer decided to not go for me, so I was back with nothing again. So then um, I tried to contact a few people, build some more connections again. Then I got in touch with my, it's like my uncle-in-law. He's from the Czech Republic, and he has connection with a team in the third tier in the Czech Republic. And he pretty much said, listen, we can, you can come here, we can give you some good, like, enough money to live, and you can stay at my house and come and play some games over here and keep looking, you know? So I went there for six months, I played games and just built my profile, got a bit of money. Then we had, like, there's a long winter break over there. So then after that, I went to London to my mum's house for Christmas, etc., and I was just emailing clubs, training, emailing clubs, and just trying to be in as top condition as I could. And I ended up getting a response from Achilles29 in the uh, the Dutch second tier. They were struggling that season, so at the halfway point, they were looking for new players. They pretty much just said, come in for a game tomorrow. We'll book you a hotel for the night, and then we can talk from there. So it was just all of a sudden, I had to jump on a plane the next day after hearing from the email, and I was playing in a game in Holland. I didn't eat during the whole day. I only had like a cappuccino and a croissant early in the morning. We played in the afternoon, 2.30 kickoff. I ended up scoring two goals, which if anyone knows anything about me, I don't really score so much, to be honest. And then they've offered me a contract directly after the game, which was just... It was amazing. It was an amazing move. I was so excited. There was a, we had a great team that half year. And I did quite well. I played in 10 games in the Dutch second tier. It was a great league, great experience. Made some really amazing friends and had a good time. Unfortunately, we couldn't fix the situation with trying to stay up. But we ended up missing out by two points, I believe. We got, got it back to so close and we just missed out. So it was just just out of our reach. I maintained keeping a lot of contacts with that. Then I ended up signing for a manager here in Holland, and he promised me so many things that he would find me a club on the same level as Achilles were in the last season, the second tier, and I really trusted him with that. He said he was speaking to so many things, speaking, speaking, and I believed him, so I was just holding out for the whole transfer window. He was telling me some things were coming up, they were coming up, nothing ended up coming up. So then I got back in, in touch with Achilles, and... I asked if I could just keep training with them, just train with the Yong team while I was waiting for opportunities to come up. So I was turning up to training every day with the Yong and just the, it's like under 23s, the Yong here in Holland. So I was training there, training there. Nothing came up for like the whole transfer window, past the transfer window. Now we're talking like one or two months after the transfer window, nothing had come up. So I was like, what am I doing? Like, I'm just here training, nothing's coming up, I need to play games. So I spoke with the technical director at the club, and he said, yeah, listen, we're having a few financial problems, so you can register with us, we can't pay you, and, you know, you're going to start playing with the Yong. So I was just like, okay, that's all good, and then just worked my way into the first team. They gave me the captain's armband, the Yong team, and then... Yeah, obviously that that level was quite low for me in the the Hof class, which I think is like the fifth or yeah fifth tier here in Holland. So obviously I just yeah performed how I usually do, and I ended up getting brought into the first team. Played one game in the league here, did well, 
and then I played in the cup the next week against NEC Nijmegen which was probably the biggest club in the second division at that time and I was one of the best players for our side on the field so after that I was just in the team you know and played the rest of the season in the third tier here with the same team Achilles. Unfortunately in the half half season financial problems didn't work itself out and we lost pretty much all of our players who had uh, professional contracts and because I wasn't being paid I didn't have a contract so I was just staying at the club and training for free pretty much and playing for them for free. In the half year they ended up giving me a contract and a house so then I was like okay I'm gonna stay and they told me that they're gonna make me their captain as well. So I did that, played and I got paid and had a nice house from the club actually for that next half year under Arno Arts and he helped me immensely with extra technique training. This half year I think I improved one of the most that I have the whole time I've been in Holland, so I mean in Europe, so it was quite a big learning experience for me there. But results weren't coming because we had pretty much an amateur team with all players were younger than me. I was the captain at 23 years old, 22, 23 years old, and I was one of the oldest in the team. So obviously we had some good talent, good talented players, but everyone was young. So we ended up getting relegated again, which was crazy. So then I pretty much was going down into the fourth tier in Holland. I was stuck. I had no options. Holland was kind of finished for me because, yeah, my profile was looking bad here from having these relegations with Achilles and the financial problems it was big news all over the country so that's what happened and this whole time I've been building connections and trying to figure things out and then I ended up speaking to a club in New Zealand which I won't name out of respect and I pretty much promised them that I was coming back I had nothing honestly I had nothing at the time so I told them I was coming back they offered me a little bit of work and uh, part-time work and the training as well I would have been just able to survive financially it would have been tough I got a girlfriend over in here in Holland now and we would have had to have worked things out and it just was a really difficult situation I booked my ticket back through yeah my family which I'm super lucky for they would they would help me out with half of the ticket which of course was a big help but still the money was tight it was very tough Three days from when I was leaving on this flight, I got a call from a scout who I'd been talking with and he said, there's an opportunity in the top tier in Slovakia, you've got to go. After all this, I booked a flight, I'd promised this trainer in New Zealand I was going and it was crazy. I ended up getting on this flight to Slovakia, two trainings, they offered me a contract, good money, good league, fully professional and I was playing. So it was just an unbelievable situation. I had to get on the phone and make some very difficult calls because in, in New Zealand, the club, the coach is an amazing coach. He's an amazing guy. I can only say good words about him. And I felt bad, you know, in my heart, but it was an opportunity and the moment was there and I had to grab it because it was a big opportunity for me. Imagine, I'd just been relegated from the fourth tier in Holland and moving to the top tier in Slovakia the money was good and and yeah so I had to I had to make a hard decision and I took it uh, I ended up playing uh, nine games in the league I played defensive midfield center defender played some amazing games we beat some pretty good teams and I performed well I was happy with how I performed it gave me a lot of confidence because I really fit into the level and I felt like I was doing a good job and was a leader in the team it came to the half season we got a new coach he brought in a lot of players from his former club and now I've I, I, they didn't renew my contract so I'm back in a same position where I'm looking for a club again and nothing's come up so far it's becoming to the end of the transfer window in January and I've had a few opportunities that's not been what I've been looking for. I got a very good offer from a team in the top tier in New Zealand which I turned down because I wasn't ready to move back to New Zealand again yet and the salary was good there to be honest for a New Zealand team and it was another team and I knew the coach as well very well and he's a very top coach as well. I knew I'd improve there but it's just so far away so... That's the situation I'm at now. I'm looking for a club. I'm training again with Arno in Holland, doing the technique trainings, doing the trainings with Achilles and trying to stay fit while I look for something. But that's the situation. That's the real life of a professional football player. Having to move around, not having a club for a little while, looking for next options, connections, and just trying to build contacts and speaking with people, keeping up to date with everyone and just working hard in this way. And it is what it is, you know? A lot of alone time, a lot of training, a lot of boring down times that you gotta try and keep yourself busy. And that's it, that's the situation I'm at.
and now and I'm just staying positive and hoping for the best really hoping that something comes up but I'm still here and working on the things that I can do and I believe there's only a certain amount of things you can control and those are the things that you got to focus out on and the other things will sort itself out so that's where I'm at now and it'll be interesting to check back on this like <laughs> in a bit and see where I am in a few months because of course I hope something comes up and it might not but that's the situation. I'm off to training tonight now actually with Achilles so I'm just heading off now and I'll get in touch with you guys later when I get back. Ciao!